Hello world, welcome back to Subray 23's Thought Experiment. This is going to be episode 3 of the Scale and Rotation series. Uh, in this episode, we will start writing our uh, selection box uh, script. Uh, we will dig into a few more Unity C Sharp basics uh, by learning how to make an object from scratch in code. And in the process, we'll learn about some of the things that make up a Unity game object. First though, uh, we need to see something uh, that I left out of the previous video. We need to see the code working. Um, in episode two, we wrote the manager for the system. Uh, its job is to take any object that enters the scene, and if certain conditions are met, add the class component, add a class component to the new object and change its tag. Um, so let's add a couple of objects to the scene. So we're gonna add a cube, and we will add a cylinder, and we will move so we can select them but the cube we're going to tag as cursor and we will leave the other one untagged now if we hit play I can look at the cube object and we can see the cursor tag and we do not see the uh, scale and rot sys script. Now if I select the cylinder, we do see the scale and rot sys tag and we also see the script attached. If I was to add another uh, script to the scene or another uh, object to the scene, we'd see the same thing. All right, so that concludes the previous episode. Now let's dig into our new one. We can leave our new objects in the scene for now. Uh, in the project view under scripts, uh, we want to click scripts and select scale and rot sys and double click it. Now, uh, once it loads, you'll see we've got a, our fresh script again uh, with the start and update functions. Uh, in this one, we don't need an update function, so we're just going to delete that. and hit control s to save it now before we get too deep into the code uh, for this one let's go um, quickly over some unity concepts now, first up we've got a game object everything in unity is a game object cameras lights empty objects primitives as you saw um, they are made up of a transform and typically some other combination of components. Um, now, transforms sound like they must be fairly important if they're in every game object, right? Uh, the transform um, is a component that holds the position, rotation, and scale of the object. Uh, so, yeah, very important. Um, next up, we have the renderer. Uh, the renderer is how we see objects uh, in Unity. It references the materials uh, and some other elements of, that involve casting and receiving shadows. Um, following that, we have materials. Uh, materials, um, these are the details of the appearance of an object, um, how it reacts to light, what's its color, um, its, refle its reflectivity, uh, as well as its texture information. Its um, tiling information, the UV coordinates and stuff like that are all tied to materials and textures. Um, another common component, uh, the one that we will see somewhat in this one, is colliders. Uh, they're used to detect collisions between objects in an application. Um, they can be combined with rigid bodies um, to help create natural physics. Uh, another common use is using them on vis visible or invisible objects to, to trigger events. And the final one we're gonna go over um, is bounds. Bounds are the box that surrounds the entire object. Um, this is useful for finding uh, the center, the uh, extents as well as the min and max of the object. Now, back in Visual Studio, uh, we can get started with the code. Um, we need to initialize some objects. 
Um, first up, we're going to create a private game object called SNR object. And so private is access modifier. Um, basically, for the most part, we, we stick to public and or private. A public access modifier, let's see. It will do, um, well, first and foremost, if you don't put an access modifier, uh, private is assumed. Uh, S A R bounds, and here we will do a public material. All right, so now we're going to hit Control C and tab back over to our unity window we can see all these things that we've created now if we were to click on the cube wait was it no nope. and if we run we can see here sar material there's currently nothing there because we don't have a material in scene um and that doesn't seem to do much at the moment because all we did was create the um, the reference to all right in our start function the only thing we have to worry about is our bounds so we're gonna put reference to our bounds and it's going to equal a new bounds now remember bounds is going to be the volume of the object that we're referencing which in this particular case is the object that this script is attached to. Next up, we are going to do this. This is something I use in most of my um, HoloLens development. And what that is, is on mouse down, I always reference on select. This allows me to test select um, functions inside unity without having to export it then we're going to run our create our on select function on select is part of the hollow toolkit that allows us to air tap on a product uh, uh, object or uh, say select to an object and this will be triggered um, Let's run back up here under our initializing. We forgot two things. Well, we really forgot one. Uh, a bool. And if you don't know, a bool is a variable that has a true or false answer. In our particular case, we want to start false. Because we're asking it essentially, are you currently drawing our, uh, our object that we're creating here? I didn't say event. That should be on select. Here's the breakdown of on select. Um, so on select, is it being drawn? So that's our bool draw, yes or no. If draw is, is true and we've selected the object again, that means that, um, that we want to make sure that there's no, there, there are children attached to this object. Um, that the tag isn't cursor and that the bool is draw. And if all those conditions are met, we're going to delete all the children to essentially reset our selection box. Uh, if draw is false or there is not one, we are going to create a box. We're going to set its position to the current object's position. We're going to set the box's um, parent. That should be a possessive we'll set the boxes parent to the object 
uh, we'll destroy the box's collider because this particular box does not need a collider. It will just cause us to be unable to select the object under it again. Uh, we're going to get a reference to the box's renderer. And uh, using the parent object's mesh filter, we're going to get a reference to the object's bounds. Then we'll scale the object to be a little bit bigger than the ob than the than this object. Uh, we'll create eight points around the object uh, as scaling handles. Um, well, we're going to set the, the vector threes, then we'll create the scaling handles. Um, we will create and apply a material to the boxes, and then we will change the boxes tags. I know that seems like a lot, and it, it, it probably is a little bit. Um, but this also brings up another point that we need to go over that we're about to run into. Uh, game object versus game object. Lowercase game object or lowercase game with a uppercase O is a reference to the object that a class is currently attached to uh, or a component. So if you're writing a script and you reference this game object, that means this object. And it's often re referred to as uh, THIS dot game object. If you're uh, calling the game object, you're calling the actual game object class. Um, and and or making a fresh game object. Um, it can also be used in your, like we're using here to reference a separate game object um, that may be in the scene or in our case we'll be creating. All right, all that stuff aside, let's tab back into Visual Studio and get going with this. So, if it's not draw, if the bool is false, then we want to draw our selection box, change draw to true, and then we're done with that. Else, if draw is true and game object dot transform dot child count does not equal zero so if it has children and it does not have the tag cursor I will always try to misspell that apparently delete all children and we were going to set draw to equal to false so click the object draw draw it defaults to false we'll draw the selection box and we'll change draw to true and if you click it again it runs through this it deletes all the object or all the children and then draw is set to false And that's the end of that on select function. So now we have to write the draw selection box and the delete all children. In an effort to keep these episodes from being way too long, uh, we're going to cut this one here and we will continue this in the next episode. As always, this is Jason. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, and uh, if you like what I'm doing, check out my Patreon. It should be, the link should be in the, uh, description below and we will see you in the next episode. Yeah.